Hello, I'm Solly Joe from Would You Bend and welcome to Home Talk. Today we have a fabulous little project here. We have an old piece of furniture and we're going to be dressing her up with Would You Bend mouldings and lots of other goodies. So let's get started. We're going to be dressing the front of this piece of furniture with some Would You Bend mouldings. Now what are Would You Bend mouldings? They are an applique. They have all the properties of wood. So you can paint them, sand them, stain them because they're absorbent. But the best thing about these beauties is, once you warm them up, they become nice and flexible. So to heat your Would You Bend mouldings up, you can use a hairdryer, just takes a little bit longer, or a heat gun if you feel proficient with one, or you can lay them all on a griddle. So once you've got your Would You Bend nice and bendy, you can then pop your glue on so you can stick it to the designated substrate. Always use a good quality wood glue and always spread the glue out entirely on the back of your Would You Bend moulding. That way you will get a very good adhesion to the substrate. So before you actually stick it down to the surface, you can remove any excess glue with a Q-tip. Once the Would You Bend mouldings are warmed up, as you can see, they can be bent to just about any contour. And once they cool down, they will remain in the position that you have bent them into. Would You Bend mouldings can be adhered to just about any surface. Wood, metal, plastic, stone, and even glass. A lot of people ask me if when the Would You Bend moulding is warm, you push your nail into it, are you going to ruin the design? No, you're not. It will just spring back into its original form. So I'm going to now show you how you can cut your Would You Bend moulding once it's warmed up. So once your Would You Bend moulding is nice and warm, you can come in with a Stanley knife and just cut that into place. So for my cut here, it is a little bit jagged. So I'm now going to sand it down with some sandpaper. As I said before, you can sand Would You Bend mouldings and you get real sawdust. So now I've got this side in, I'm going to come in and do exactly the same thing on the other side. I'm going to heat the Would You Bend up, press it into the recess. Just need to see where I'm cutting here. I'm going to come in with my Stanley knife and it cuts like putty. It's just like cutting plastiline. Put my glue on, spread it out, and as I said before, make sure that the glue covers all the back side surface of the Would You Bend moulding. And I'm going to warm it again with my heat gun and really press it down into the surface. I'm really going to press it into the surface, and as you can see, I'm not spoiling the design or damaging the design of the Would You Bend mould and it just springs back up to its original form. We're now going to place some Would You Bend trim around this rim here. Would You Bend trims come in a length of 82 inches which is 2.1 meters long. This has been on the griddle and you can see how bendy it is. When you're working with trims always keep the trim rolled up. It retains the heat and is a lot easier to handle. I'm just popping that on the surface and the great thing about this is it bends round the corner. As a general rule the Would You Bend mouldings take the same amount of time to cool down as they do to warm up. So I've got the Would You Bend mouldings on the surface, they've cooled down, they're nicely adhered we're now going to open up the holes where the knobs are going to go. So as I said before, you can drill Would You Bend mouldings. So, you may now ask me, how are we going to get the drawers open seeing as we've stuck Would You Bend mouldings over them? So I've now got all the mouldings on the surface and I'm starting to paint her. 
in a lovely fuchsia colour. Pink is definitely in at the moment. This is the first coat of paint, so at the moment I'm just mapping my colours out because I'm going to be blending in quite a few. I'm going to come in with a little bit of our red median cadmium push chalk metallic pastes. And the colours are mixing in situ, so I'm creating lots of various shades of pink here. Back to using my pointy brush so I can get right into the nooks and crannies of the woody bend mouldings. So the blending's finished. I've left it overnight to dry, and now we're going to do some of the pretty work, we're going to be adding some bling, stenciling and in general decorating and highlighting the mouldings. So let's get on. So first of all we're going to start off with the stenciling and for the stenciling we're using our lovely Posh Chalk Premium stencils. This particular design is the Mystery Thorns. Now I have applied some low tack glue to the back and it just helps a little bit placing the stencil and I'm going to be stenciling with some posh chalk metallic pigments in various colours. This is the pale gold. Now you don't need much for the posh chalk metallic pigments. Tiny little bit and then I'm going to mix that in with our posh chalk infuser. You can use any good quality top coat and there you have it, liquid gold. I'm just going to mix that up and turn it into a relatively thin medium. Obviously the more infuser you add the runnier it becomes and you can turn these materials into a wash. As I said we've got loads of colours uh, and I have pre-mixed some red carmine and some white gold. So I'm going to use a stencil brush for this and I'm not going to go straight onto the piece I don't want a lot on so I'm going to come in and just dab off the excess with my paintbrush. If I need more I can always go back in. And some of the pale gold now. I've got to be really careful with this stuff because it is very blingy. <coughs> so are we ready for the first reveal? So I'm just going to sand this down a little bit to tone down the vibrancy. So it's night, now time to decorate the wood you've been mouldings. Coming in with some of the red carmine pigments here. And when you're dry brushing, especially with metallics, you need to hold your brush sideways. So the only thing left now is for me to bring to life these red parts here and I'm good for that I'm going to use a posh chalk um, metallic aqua patinas very highly pigmented materials and again I'm just going to brush over just gives it more depth in that corner and there you have it the front is now finished I'm now going to carry on with the sides and I'll see you in a bit So, onto the top now, and I'm going to use one of my favourite Dixie Bell colours, Peony. I'm going to be really careful that I don't splash the front and the sides, because I will mess all my lovely stenciling up. I'm now creating a metallic wash on the top, out of the posh chalk metallic pastes. So, I'm using a lot of water here, just to get the paste runnier. Right, it's now time to do the sexy sides of the drawers. So I'm just coming in now with the rose gold push short metallic paste and creating a wash. So now I'm going to stencil the side of the drawers with the push chalk stencil. Uh, this is actually the floor tile. I'm coming in now just to do a bit of raised stenciling with the posh chalk metallic paste in primary green. And now for the reveal. I'm 
the original hardware. Now they're a little bit drab and they don't go with the gold that I've already got on the surface. So I'm going to paint them with posh chalk metallic pigments. I'm using the pale gold, which is the same gold that I used on the cabinet itself. Add some infuser. I'm going to make this relatively thick so I don't need to go over it in loads of loads of coats. Right, there we go. You can see the difference there. Get these painted and get them on the piece. And that's it.